Okay, good morning. So today we're looking at exercise 5.5. on page 127, okay? The question says, sketch the graphs of the following, clearly indicating the intercepts with the axis and the coordinates of the turning points, okay? So, there's a way of getting the turning point from, uh, from the form given, which is y is equal to uh, a into x minus uh, p squared plus q. By that, we'll, we'll discover as we're doing this exercise, okay? So, what we need to do is we need to first multiply this out. I get x squared, that times that times 2 is going to give you 2x plus 1 minus 4 is my negative 3. So, we do it in, in five steps to draw this graph. Firstly, the shape of this graph, it's positive, so the graph is smiling. Secondly, is our x-intercept. What, what do we do for x-intercept? We let y equal to 0. So we now say 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay? This is now a trinomial. If you can't use a trinomial, don't keep yourself brave. Use the quadratic formula. Okay? Alhamdulillah, I know how to use the, the root, so it's going to be minus 1. Then. So we say x is in equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 1. Okay? All right, so this is going to be going to cut your x-axis. All right. Thereafter, we now work out the y-intercept. What do I do for the y-intercept? We let x equal 0. Remember now the equation, let me just move this up a bit. Remember now the equation is y is equal to um, x squared plus 2x minus 3 which is also y is equal to x plus 1 squared minus 4. Okay, let's move that up, so. All right, so for the y-intercept, so y is equal to, I can use any one of the two, so 0 plus 2 times 2 minus 3, which gives you negative 3. So you know y, look at the y-axis at negative 3. But we also know that that's your constant, which is also your y-intercept. Okay? So, um... Then the, 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 that was bullet 3, bullet 4 is your turning point. How do you work out turning point? It's basically your axis of symmetry, which is minus b over 2a. Okay? Where your b value is 2, so it's going to be negative 2 over 2 times a, which is 1, which gives you negative 1. Okay? So y equals, now I substitute negative 1 in one of the two equations, so it's going to give you negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1, minus 3. It's going to give you 1. We put this in the calculator. We get negative 4. So the turning point is negative 1 and negative 4. So what do you see? What do you notice about this turning point here and this point here? It's negative, it's positive 1. Okay, you see he has negative, he has positive 1 and he has negative 1. He has negative 4 and, and negative 4. Can you see that? Okay. It doesn't smudge everything here because what it's a sort of the pin. Okay, but you see there's a relationship that actually exists between this. For, for every graph I'll indicate, I'll highlight that. And towards the end of it, you should be able to draw your turning point straight from here. Okay, if it's given in that form. All right. I forgot to mention that in class yesterday because uh, time ran out. So, yeah, I'm uh, highlighting it to you now. Okay. So, this is enough information to draw the graph. So, the fifth bullet is to sketch. Okay. The fourth, uh, fifth point is to sketch the graph. So, that's your y-intercept. X-intercept, that's your origin there. So, we see the graph is smiling. It's going to cut at negative 3. And has a, a y-value of 1. Uh, negative 3 and 1, cut your y-intercept at negative 3. So it's about the same length as that this, so there's new negative 3. Your turning point has an axis of symmetry at negative 1. So that's negative 1. Normally we use a ruler, as you saw me use that. And then negative 4. There's your negative 4. So that's negative 1 and negative 4. 
So what we do is from the turning point we draw. There we go. Okay, and one is there, and it's going to go through minus three. Okay. So let's look at, okay, we will leave some space here at the bottom of this graph, and then we will look at uh, some, the domain, the range, and the interpreting questions, okay? So I'm going to leave a few lines there. So I'll come back to... Th I think I should answer for one time. Okay, so I'm going to list a few questions quickly, and then from those questions we're going to answer all these graphs with the following questions, okay? Okay, for every graph, I'm going to do the following, okay? You want to work out the domain? You can write this down. For number one, it will be the domain followed by the range. The number two is where the graph, I know it wasn't given as f of x, but we're going to say the parabola. f of x is the parabola, is greater than or equal to zero, where the parabola is less than zero. The third one is where the graph has a maximum or a minimum value. Okay, the equation if f of x is reflected in the x-axis or the equation if f of, of x is reflected in the y-axis or the x equal to zero line. The equation of the x-axis is y is equal to zero. The, equ the equation of the y-axis, x equal to zero. And then number five, determine p of x if p of x is equal to f of x minus four. Okay, so those are the questions I will be looking at for each and every uh, one of these graphs that I'm going to be doing now, okay? So let's go with the first graph. So number one is the domain of this graph. Domain is all possible x values, okay? So as you can see, this graph goes negative infinity and positive infinity. So your domain is x is an element of all real numbers. <coughs> let's look at the range. The range is all possible y values, okay? So does this graph exist in negative infinity? No. Where does this graph start existing at? Negative 4 onwards. So we have to say y and negative 4. So we say y has to be more than or equal to negative 4. Okay. Let's look at number 2. Number 2 says, where is f of x greater than or equal to 0? Or where is f of x less than 0? As I said, there's no f of x, but we're going to call the parabola for now f of x. Where is it greater than 0? Okay, or where is it above the line? You see that this part of the graph here is greater than zero. Okay, as you can see, there's a break in solution, so x has to be less than negative three, or x must be more than one. But if you look at this here, the inequality is more than and equal to. So it is equal to at negative three, it's equal to at negative three, y value zero. It's equal there as well. Otherwise, with f of x less than 0, as you can see, is below the line. So in other words, x must be greater than negative 3 and less than, th less than 1. Okay. They would ask you one of these in the exam. They won't ask you both. Okay. I'm just showing you the variation on it. Number 3, is this graph a maximum or a minimum? It's a minimum. And it has a minimum value of a negative 4. Okay, and it occurs at x equal to minus 1. Number 4. The equation if, uh, uh, if f is reflected in the x-axis. So if something is reflected in x-axis, x-axis, uh, the rule is um, x and y, y becomes negative. Okay? Reflected in the x-axis, y becomes negative. So I can use any one of the two graphs, um, uh, equations. Okay, so you say negative y is equal to x plus 1 squared minus 4 divided by negative. You then get negative x plus 1 squared plus 4. The negative won't affect that in the inside of the bracket. Okay. Then if it's reflected in y-axis, the rule says if it's reflected in y-axis, x becomes negative. So y is equal to minus x plus 1 squared minus 4. So it's going to be... I can take out the x as a negative as a common factor, but because of the square, it remains positive. And there we go. Okay. And then the last question is for number five. For p of x, 
if it's going to be f of x minus 4. So remember, um, this is your f of x. Um, that's your f of x. So what must I do? I must subtract 4. So if I subtract 4 from this, it will become x plus 1 squared minus 8. Okay.